Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. So in three, two. Good afternoon. As chair, I now call to order the December 11, 2023 meeting of the Policy Review Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's policy review committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcasted through Microsoft Teams Live on the BCPS website. To conduct this meeting by virtual means, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Wash, Ms. Pitts, or Ms. Howie if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Pitts, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Thank you. Ms. Frimpong? Present. Thank you. Ms. Harvey? Dr. Savoy? Ms. Veluski? Present. Thank you. Ms. Pumphrey? Present. Thank you. You have three present, which makes a quorum. Thank you. Ms. Pitts, please call the roll to determine which staff members are present in this meeting. Sure. Mr. <laughs> Kevin Conley? Yes, I'm here. Hi, President. Thank, thank you. Mr. Pete Dixit? Present. Thank you. Dr. Jess Grimm. Present. Thank you. Mr. Christopher Hartlove. Here. Thank you. Dr. Monica Hetrick. Here. Mr. Chris Roberts. Present. Thank you. Mr. Paul Taylor. Present. Thank you. Ms. Melanie Webster. Present. Thank you. Ms. Margaret Ann Howie. Here. Thank you. Ms. Vicki Wash. Here. Thank you, Ms. Pumphrey. I will pass the meeting back over to you. Thank you, Ms. Pitts. The first item on our agenda uh, for B1 is policy 3620 inventories. And for that, I call on Mr. Hartlove. Mm -hmm. Can you repeat that, Ms. Ms. Pumphrey? I'm, I, I missed that. Sure. The first item on our agenda is policy 3620 inventories. And for, th for that, I call on Mr. Hartlove. Sure. Um, we have, uh, we brought this policy forward. I believe Ms. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Webster is on the call, who uh, who is um, worked with the policy. Can Ms. Webster, can you jump on? Sure, I'm here. Sorry, my camera is not a cooperating. Sounds like neither is my mic. All right. We hear you. We can hear you, yes. Oh, good. Okay. So we reviewed the policy, and the only uh, change that we are recommending is the um, change to um, make it more consistent. Uh, we refer to the school system, so we only made one, are recommending one change in on line 24 to remove Baltimore County Public Schools and change it to the school systems to be consistent with the rest of the policy. Okay, thank you very much. Is there any discussion on the recommended changes to policy 3620? Okay, seeing none, if there are no, no corrections and no objection, policy 3620 is moved forward for first reader as presented. Thank you, Mr. Hartlove. Thank you, Ms. Pumphrey. May Mr. Hartlove and Ms. Webster be excused, please? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you. Thank you.
And the next item on our agenda is policy 3170 framework for, for continuous improvement. And for that, I call on Mr. Connolly. Good afternoon. Afternoon. So today we are presenting to the policy review committee uh, policy and rule 3170 for approval. OK, is there any discussion on the recommended policy on the recommended changes to policy 3170? OK, if there are no corrections and no objection, policy 3170 is moved forward for first reader as presented. Thank you, Mr. Connolly. Thank you. Wishing you all a joyous holiday season. Thank you. You as well. Thank you. And may uh, Dr. Hetrick and Mr. Connolly be excused, please. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you all. OK, next on our agenda is policy 3520, physical plant services, maintenance and operations. And for that, I call on Mr. Dixit. Good afternoon. Uh, policy 3520 is for uh, it establishes guidelines for care and man maintenance of school system buildings. Uh, just in brief, the changes that have been included are added definitions for school facilities removed building equipment and grounds and replaced with school facilities in school in lines 9, 23 and 31. In paragraph 3 standards added guidelines. On line 21 in addition to and improvements. In line 27 added operations to make the language consistent with paragraph 3A and revised and updated uh, order of related policies. These are some of the uh, changes and made sure that it complies with editing conventions. With that, we are requesting your approval. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Is there any discussion on the recommended changes to policy 3520? OK, seeing none, if there are no corrections and no objection, policy 3520 is moved forward as first reader as presented. And next um, on our agenda is policy 3532, restitution for vandalism, which also we, I call on Mr. Dixit. Good afternoon again. Policy 3532 provides that the school system will seek restitution from students for act of vandalism to board property. The changes, as you see uh, in the policy analysis, line eight has been added and or personal to clarify the student are responsible for restitution. In paragraph two, definitions on line 18, added or personal property of students, faculty and others on school property or at a school sponsored event at the time of the violation. And this is to align with policy 5550 and 5560. In paragraph three, standards on line 26, added or personal um, referencing property in section A and in section B on line 32 to align with policy 5550 and 5560. Updated the title in order of related board policies included a hyperlink to superintendent's rule 3532 and complied with the policy reviews uh, committee's editing conventions. With that, we request your approval of the policy. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Is there any discussion on the recommended changes to policy 3532? Board member from Paul, I just have one question. Sure. Um, this, when it says for a student, is this only, well, I guess it only governs the Baltimore County students, or would this be for any student? We would have the expectation of if they happen to be at a school uh, sponsored event or school activity that they damage property. Which student would this apply to? 
So my understanding is that it is for a Baltimore County Public School students, and I'll let Ms. Howie uh, explain if there's any change to that, to my understanding. That is correct, Ms. Frumpong. Uh, Mr. Dixit, uh, as Mr. Dixit said, this is to apply to BCPS students. Uh, we would have to sue directly uh, or, or seek directly from uh, students who vandalize and who uh, live in other jurisdictions, um, even if they're prosecuted here. I don't know, and I would have to ask Mr. Roberts whether or not we've ever sought um, uh, remuneration from out of county students. I don't know that we have. Uh, but I can certainly find out. OK, thank you. And Ms. Salski, it looks like you also had a question. Um, thank you. Um, is there anything in the policy that distinguishes between um, what's considered school property versus teacher property? You know, for example, if a teacher buys, you know, 30 highlighters, and, and the bin gets stolen, or if the teacher buys a, a radio to use in the classroom and it gets stolen, would that be part of this policy or would that be something else? So it's theft is not covered by this policy, um, Ms. Tulefsky, but as you see from the changes that are in, uh, began at lines 18, through 21, um, not only board property, vandalism of board property, but personal property of students, faculty, and others. Okay. It's covered. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, seeing none, if there are no corrections and no objection, policy 3532 is moved forward for first reader as presented. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Um, and the next item on our agenda is policy 7610, which is permanent closure of a school building. Uh, policy 7610 was added to the PRC schedule at my request to determine whether there should be communication protocols in this policy or in another policy. So um, I believe this first this issue first came up when we were closing um, Golden Ring Middle School. And some of the concern was that because um, the closing was announced and several years had passed before um, we were actually it was actually brought to the board for closure, we had received some input from the public that indicated that some um, stakeholders were not aware that the school was closing and, and they, um, of course, were not happy about that. So um, this was brought forward to see if there's anywhere um, in this policy where we as a board think we could add something or make some changes to make communication um, more intentional as far as a students, especially at the middle school, I think, because the middle school is only three years. Um, so there may be parents who come in after it's announced that the school may close and between that time period and the time that is brought forward to the board. Um, so um, does anybody have any input on that? So I just want to make sure I understand. Um, Ms. Pumphrey, are you asking about after the board has made its decision or before uh, or when the uh, the process is going through um, the steps that are required uh, by state regulation? At which point um, did you sense uh, a disconnect? I think throughout the throughout the process. So, um, of course, the announcement for Golden Ring. I'm, I'm just mentioning Golden Ring because that's where, where my um, you know where my reference is. Um, and when I became a board member, it had already been announced that Golden Ring was closing, but we had not yet voted on it as a board, um, or maybe not announced, but mentioned that it might be closing. And so, um, as as we proceeded with the public hearing, et cetera, um, stakeholders reached out and were upset that they they indicated that they weren't they didn't know they weren't aware that the school was going to close and they felt like they didn't have enough input. Um, when I look at the policy specifically, there was one part. Let me see if I can find it now. That talked about the communication, and it mentions posting in the newspaper, I believe. 
looking for that now. Um, that's, that's in D. section 2D, as in yeah. David? Yes. Yeah. D1. Mm -hmm. So I'm sort of thinking that may be a place where we may change because at this point we're probably announcing, you know, other other means also social media, through emails. Um, that's just one of my thoughts, um, and sort of having an ongoing communication throughout the process um, instead of just sort of like a one time and then at the end when it's being at the public hearing. I don't know if that's clear. So the public hearing is required by state regulation and we're further required by state regulation to advertise in at least, as it says, two newspapers of general circulation, which as you can imagine, committee members is now its own challenge, given right. where newspapers are, this, this, this uh, regulation um, is about 40 years old and has not been updated. So the, the hearing is only after there's been a recommendation for closure. So uh, I'm wondering if, um, if it would be responsive as far as what your concerns are, Ms. Pumphrey. Uh, you, you talked about continual um, notice. Um, sub C is prior to making the final decision, the board shall convene a public hearing. So is it prior to the public hearing that um, that the committee believes that there should be some sort of communication? Uh, is that where you think that uh, that policy should be adjusted? In my opinion, yes, I think it should be adjusted there. That would be a good place to um, sort of give more notice to the public as far as the closure or possible closure of the school. And I'll ask, I would ask Dr. Grimm to um, address communication prior to there being a recommendation for a school closure because it, it usually doesn't happen without there being some public input. But I understand your concern, um, Ms. Pumphrey, that the community was not aware before or the community maybe didn't remember before the recommendation um, for for the public hearing was um, was announced. Dr. Grimm. Good afternoon, Ms. Pumphrey, Ms. Lusky, Ms. Frempong. How are you this afternoon? Um, so in uh, Superintendent's uh, Rule 7610, it does detail um, who's responsible for the communication pieces at which time. And so uh, certainly it is it is under your purview if, if you wish to add uh, details un under the under the policy, um, but the superintendents were required under a rule for the superintendent to communicate with um, not only the principal, but the staff, um, the PTA and the area education advisory council. Um, if you would if you would prefer, we could also add a, a fifth item and that's um, some other notation of, of notice to uh, parents and guardians. Um, the recommendation to the board does come with that community notice in, a, in addition to, um, it's a press release in addition to those other, um, those other stakeholders that are, that are notified. And then the public hearing has its, has its own requirements for communication and then the decision has um, its criteria under again those are under the rule so if if that's something that you'd like us to look at if that would be helpful to add that point under the rule we can certainly um, certainly look at that as well i i do i think i think I'm that sorry. would be helpful and i did and i was thinking when i was looking at this is this more of an implementation which would be rule and not policy um, I, I, Concerned about the communication policy, and I think that this is what was a long process, and that big issue here, um, sort of like unofficially announced and sort of rumor, um, and then uh, wasn't actually so some public, some parts for part of the public didn't feel that it was they were notified properly. did you also have a question? I see your comment in the chat. No, I think that's a great idea, and I think the school system has really moved in a great direction with using the website, um, phone calls, 
the blast, so to speak, to um, just make the public aware of, of events and meetings and forums and such. So it almost is becoming like sort of a standardized communication style that beyond the newspapers we are using, um, again, the website, et cetera. So this would be a great place to do that as well. I agree, and I think the communication in general has changed. And so this this review, although it's coming up now, I think some of this may have been um, addressed differently had it been, you know, currently instead of back when Golden Ring was being closed. I think communication now is is improving dra dramatically. So that's a good point to make. Yeah, and, I, and I'd also like to add. I, I think um, for 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 all of you as current board members, you've had two. Uh, Un, kind of, I would say unusual but difficult closings. You had to vote on Golden Ring and then you had the Campfield closure that came up. Um, I, I, I don't foresee, I don't believe that there are any other program closures that are at this point on the on the horizon. This isn't something that we that we regularly do and um, as a board you had the opportunity um, and the challenge to to deal with two of those in a, in a very short period of time. Um, I also think uh, it, it's not lost on us that due to the nature of the camp field closure, we need to make sure uh, from a school system vantage point that, that we are frequently communicating with the public because that's not happening like gold, you know, Golden Ring closes at the end of this year. Um, camp field closes in phases as students are returning back to their home schools. Um, so we want to make sure that that communication is is clear and consistent as well. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from board members? I think board member Ping Pong. Um, yeah. So it kind of piggybacking off of what Mr. Grimm said, and that's actually what I was going to speak about. The other piece of it is, for example, with um, Golden Ring being a middle school, the way that I read this is that all of the students in the middle school, um, the parents would be informed. But what about elementary schools or, or students who are coming into um, the middle school who may not have had that information prior to coming in? Where do we like what's the language to cover the communication to them? So Ms. Frimpong, that's an that's an excellent question. The way it um, the way it sits now is in the superintendent's rule. There would be a there would be a press release and other public communications. Um, it is it is very vague and, and quite frankly, as was noted here, um, it should be updated to include some of the other means of communication that that we that we use. So it would be left to, to public communication. Um, we can certainly take a look at language um, that would in the, you know in the event of, that it's a that it's part of a um, a feeder pattern. That we that we notify the um, the feeder schools as well or the feeder school principals. We can make that notation. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments? So I think based upon our discussion here, we um, it seems that maybe we don't need to do any revisions to the policy at this point, but just wait for staff to. Um, speak to maybe some possible changes in the rule. Does that sound yes. correct, Ms. Howie? OK. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'll ask um, Ms. Wash and Ms. Uh, Pitts to calendar it so that we can report back to you once the rule has been completed. OK, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Graham. Welcome. Thank you. And committee members may Dr. Graham, Mr. Dixit and Mr. Taylor be excused. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. OK, and the next item on our agenda is Committee General Good and Welfare. The floor is now open to members of the committee to discuss issues of concern. I must emphasize that this is not the time to conduct business as there has not been notice provided as required by the Open, Meet open Meetings Act. Does anybody have any um, issues for discussion? OK, seeing none, um, the next meeting for the policy review and excuse me, the next meeting of the policy review committee is scheduled for Monday, February 5th at 2023 at 430 PM, and that would be 2024 actually <laughs> because there is no further business. The meeting is now adjourned.
Thank you, everyone. Thank you, committee members. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.